You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hey there, and welcome to episode 222 of the Soul Forge Podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Soul Forge podcast. I'm your host, Trent, and we have got a lot of fun things to talk about this week. Oh, wait. You were expecting to be hosted by Sean, and this is Trent. And what does that mean, and why is this happening? Well, you'll just have to stay tuned for the second half of the episode to find out what that's all about. All right, but what are we going to talk about first? Well, if you listened to last week's episode, you know that uh, I was heading to my old hometown of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada to participate as a vendor in Steel City NerdCon, the third NerdCon hosted by Vintage Games and Junk on Queen Street, one of my favorite stores of all time. If I could open up a store just like that here in Timmins, I would certainly do so. And maybe one day I will. But that's a story for another day. All right, let's get into it. I left Timmins last Thursday. I used a personal day on Friday and set up the sale on the Saturday and came home on the Sunday. And what a trip it was. All right, so I left Thursday and it was a bright and sunny day. And the roads were relatively clear. Lots of construction, unfortunately, uh, delayed my arrival by a little bit, but not too, too bad. But the most amazing thing, and the reason I realized I miss living in and around the Sioux so much, is because of the pretty colors of the trees. And, and let, me, uh, let me paint a picture for you, if I might. If you look on the map of North America, and you look at Canada, and you look at Ontario, specifically northern Ontario, you'll see where Timmins is, uh, way up north there. Not quite up north as uh, some places, but uh, it's it's pretty up there. So what we do is we uh, take Highway 101 until it reaches Highway 129. And then once we are off the 129, we hit Highway 17 on the road to the Sioux. But first, we have to do Timmins to Chapleau on Highway 101. And all the trees are very muted and dull and boring. When fall hits, normally what I'm used to is an explosion of color. But not up here. Uh, I guess we're too far north, or maybe Timmins really is the land that culture forgot and the environment knows it too. I'm not sure exactly what it's all about. But the trees, when they turn colors, they turn a dull yellow. There's a hint of uh, a really dull orange and a couple dull reds here and there, but for the most part, uh, it's green trees and dull yellow trees. But once you get off the Highway 101, uh, bypass Shaplow and hit the 129, the colors really explode. And they're so bright and colorful. And there's bright, bright oranges and deep, dark and light reds and yellows and all kinds of combinations. It's like the the forest is on fire with brightness. And it's almost immediately. And it's everywhere. And it, it fills your soul with a lightness that you don't normally feel when you're up here in Timmins. Because Timmins is a heavy-feeling town. I'm not sure if I can really explain it so that you can understand. But that that's the way it is. It, it's more uh, bleh, depressing and uh, just heavy. But once once you hit... Uh, the Shaplow Highway, 
on the way to Thessalon before you hit Highway 17 to the Sioux. Oh, it's the, the, the colors. They're magnificent. I even took uh, like a 20 second video and posted it on my Facebook wall. And I probably shouldn't have done that because I was driving it with my phone on, but uh, I, I had to show it. And if you're following me on uh, Facebook, you could uh, look back a few days to uh, what was that? That would have been, uh, I think, October 4th. First or maybe no maybe September no September 30th was the day that was the Thursday and I had to take the video because it just made me feel happy and and bright and light and like like I was coming home because I lived in the Sioux for about 20 years born and raised there and it just feels like home and that's that's what it is and even the colors express that to me I, I don't really know if I can articulate how it feels if you know you know and that's pretty much the way it is so anyway, I took the video and I just I just had to and it made me feel good. And then I, I spent uh, about four days in the Sioux and it was amazing. Uh, it's always good to go home. And every time I'm there, I'm like, oh, I really should move back here. Uh, but I've been in Timmins just over 18 years and uh, I, I feel like like uh, like the prisoners in the Shawshank Redemption, you know, when they're talking about getting out and they're afraid because they've been institutionalized. That's sometimes how I feel. I'd love to move back, but it's a scary thought. Just institutionalized. Institutionalized my ass. The man's been in here 50 years, Hayward. 50 years. This is all he knows. In here, he's an important man. He's an educated man. Outside, he's nothing. Just a used up con with arthritis in both hands. Probably couldn't get a library card if you tried. You know what I'm trying to say? Fred, I do believe you're talking out of your ass. You believe whatever you want, Floyd. But I'm telling you, these walls are funny. First you hate them, then you get used to them. Enough time passes, you get so you depend on them. That's institutionalized. And I still have 15 years before retirement, so I don't know. I, I think about it all the time, and maybe I'll just up and move one day, and maybe I'll stay here till I die. Who knows? I'm not sure. But anyway, I love being back in the Sioux, and that's what it's all about. Uh, another plan that I had when I was there, uh, I was going to record a bunch of podcasts. Uh, like my brother's wife has recently gone back to school, and we we're going to talk about that. Uh, I was going to, I stayed with Robin, brother Robin, and um, well, we were going to do a few things too, but it just, it never felt like the right moment to do a podcast. I, even though I brought my recording equipment, I, we just didn't bother. And that's okay. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Because uh, I'm recording an episode for all you boys and girls out there in podcast land right now. Uh, so let's talk about NerdCon and what happened. Uh, apparently it was one of the bigger shows they've had. Lots and lots of people. So many people dressed up for the convention. Uh, there was Harley Quinn and um, all kinds of comic book characters and video game dudes that I couldn't recognize. Uh, but it was fun. Uh, I had my table. I sat with Robin. Uh, made, made a few bucks. Probably made half as much as I did at the event two years ago and I expected to make twice as much because people haven't been able to go out and buy stuff for two years I figured they'd be itching to spend their money I got a lot of looky-loos lots of people looking at the stuff and commenting and all that kind of fun stuff but uh, not a lot of sales uh, I made enough to pay for the gas there pay for the gas back and pay for the gas to fill up my tank once I was back home plus a few extra bucks not not a whole heck of a lot but was it worth it it's always worth it to go back to the Sioux. I, I saw a girl that I hadn't seen since high school. She happened to be uh, walking by and she said, John, come here, give me a hug. And uh, so I did and it was good to see her. And yeah, it had been well, literally decades. So that was fun. Uh, and did I buy anything at NerdCon? I, I went around all the booths and no, there was nothing that I really wanted. I, I could have spent a few dollars here and there on some stuff, but I just, I didn't want any of it. And that's, I guess, because I'm trying to downsize and I don't need more stuff. Except for that Captain Picard statue that I talked about last week, but I still don't think I'm going to get. Because I thought more about it, and as much as I want it, I don't need to spend $2,500 on a two-foot statue. So anyway, that was NerdCon. Um, I plan on going back every year, switch up my inventory, 
this summer at yard sales, I got a whole bunch of wrestling action figures because people always talk about wrestling action figures. And I had a lot of people looking. Not one person bought them. The thing that was the most popular were the Cars cars. You know, Cars, the Disney Cars show with Lightning McQueen and all that. I brought a bunch of those and those were the things that went the most. So, who knew? Uh, is there anything else I want to talk about NerdCon and the Sioux? Mm, I don't think so. So, before I talk about changing your name and changing your life, let's have a couple words from the ESO Network and then we will return. Everyone these days could use a little support, and your friends at the ESO Network are no different. With the ESO Network Patreon, the cool thing is, is when you help support us, it's you who will benefit. With four tiers starting for as little as 25 cents a week, you can listen to some of your favorite network podcasts early, hear exclusive content, maybe get some ESO swag, or even possibly take a shot at the geek seat. All you need to do is sign up at patreon.com backslash ESO network. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. I would say that E3 maybe isn't the event that it once was, but everybody still plans their event around the E3 schedule. Steven Spielberg could throw out a gum commercial and we'd all watch it because it's Steven Spielberg. Dragon Age 4 is carrying, I think, the future of Bioware on its shoulders. That's the Pop Culture Cosmo Show. And the PCC Multiverse. Catch our shows on Worldwide Radio seven days a week and right here on the ESO Network. Welcome to Dr. Geek's Laboratory. Dr. Geek here with another reminder that the ESO Network is pro-science and pro-vaccine. We urge you to be a superhero and protect yourself, your family, and your fellow geeks around the world. Don't be fooled by the forces of evil and their anti-science misinformation campaign. Consult the latest CDC guidelines, your doctor, and get the COVID vaccine today. And we're back. Weren't those great words from the ESO Network? Yes, they were. Go check all that stuff out. Okay, so, name change. Why did I call myself Trent at the beginning of this episode while we clearly know that I'm actually Sean? Well, hanging out with Brother Curtis and his wife Kate. And I think Robin, Brother Robin, was there too. And we were just talking about different things. And uh, last week I had uh, spoken to Kate on the phone. She had called me. But up until, up until about, oh, about a year and a half ago, she was Debbie. She was born as Debbie and she was always Debbie. And I've known her as Debbie and she was still in my phone as Debbie. Uh, but she's never liked her name. So a while back she decided to change it to Kate. And so we got onto that topic of conversation. And I was like, you know what? I have also never enjoyed saying my name. And what is my name? It's Sean Vanderloo. Hey, this is Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek, and you're listening to Soul Forge with Sean Vanderloo. That's a that's a very hard name to say. There's too many syllables in the last name, and the first name is too weak sounding. And I've always wanted a stronger, more masculine sounding name. Uh, and I talked to people about that, and they said, "Yeah, but you're 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 a soft kind of guy. You're more sensitive. You're empathic. Sean suits you." I'm like, "Well, it may suit me very well, but I don't like saying it because it's Sean, you know." And I wanted something like Chuck, you know, like a hard k sound, something with some masculinity and authority. And maybe that's a ridiculous thought. Uh, and also uh, talking to Curtis, uh, him and I share a father, so we have the same last name of Vanderloo, and he's never liked saying it, but everybody likes our last name, but that's because it's not theirs, I guess. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because we don't like ourselves. Who, who knows what the uh, deeper psychological reason is, and it doesn't really matter. That's not the scope of this conversation right here. The fact is, uh, I thought about changing my name, and I was thinking, uh, something like Chuck Bradley, like that's a very authoritative sounding name, except I don't like the name Chuck. So, and you can't trust anybody with two first names, right? So Chuck Bradley, that's two first names, not going to work. So anyway, we were talking and we came up with, I don't know, maybe 200 names. We were just rambling and, and uh, talking and listing them all and uh, going through and over a bunch of different things to, to see what would, would be good. And Curtis said, how about Trent? And I'm like, you know what? That's a that's a good strong sounding name. So I changed my Facebook name from Sean to Trent and 
Ooh, it doesn't really feel like me, and I have to leave it that way for either 30 or 60 days. I'm not sure which. Uh, but I was thinking about it, and as you all know, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, and I was thinking about this. All the main characters have a k sound in their names, and I don't know if Gene Roddenberry, the creator, specified that that had to be a thing in in their uh, their writer's guide or the series Bible or like an outline uh, philosophy of names or whatever. But if we, if we think about it, and I'm just going to go through them here for you. Uh, in the first pilot for the original Star Trek back in the 60s, the main character's name was Christopher Pike. And that's got two K sounds in it. Christopher Pike. And then uh, that pilot didn't get picked up, so they did another one. And then the captain's name was James T. Kirk. Kirk has two K in it. And his first officer is Spock. So that's a thing. Uh, and then when 20 years later they made uh, the Star Trek The Next Generation, the captain was Jean-Luc Picard, Picard, and his first officer was Riker. So that was another strong sounding name. Uh, and then when Deep Space Nine came out, it was uh, Commander Sisko. Benjamin was his first name, so that's not very strong, but Sisko has the K sound and his first officer's name is Kira. And then when Star Trek Voyager came out, it was Captain Catherine Janeway and her first officer, Chakotay. So more k sounds. And then Star Trek Enterprise had Captain Archer. So there's that. Uh, and then years and years passed by. Uh, Roddenberry died in 1991 and half these people were created long after that. Uh, in 2017, we got Star Trek Discovery, and the main character's name was Michael Burnham, and the first captain on that show, his last name was Lorca. And uh, now we've got the uh, Star Trek Lower Decks cartoon, and the main character is a female named Beckett Mariner. So they've all got k sounds in it, or hard T's, or any of that kind of stuff. And I was wondering, like, do you have to have a k sound to be authoritative? I don't know if that's true. Uh, Trent doesn't have a k sound, but it's it's got that sharp stopping syllable. Trent, you know, unlike Sean, it's Trent. You're not. You're gonna. You're gonna follow Trent into battle. You're you're gonna listen to Sean read his poetry, right? So maybe, maybe that's just my own insecurities. Maybe that's my stupidity. I don't know what it is. But uh, we were talking about it, so we changed my name to Trent. And they tried calling me Trent for the whole weekend. And I still see it when I look on Facebook. And it's, oh, it's Trent Vanderloo. I'm like, mm, no, you know what? That doesn't really feel like me. Maybe I am just a Sean. And I, I don't know. Um, and then I was talking to my son's mom, Trish. And she said, uh, I, I know what you're feeling. But but you are a, a softy. You're, you're, a, you're a friendly guy. And think of all the people in your life who said they love you and called you Sean. And I, I guess she was getting at my mom, who's been gone for seven years, who never knew me as Trent, obviously. And uh, there, there was a whole point that she had behind that. And, and I, I, I get it. And am I going to change my name? Mm, probably I'm not going to change my name. But there it is. It's, it's always been a thing in my head where I wanted a nice, strong-sounding name, like Chuck Bradley... Or, uh, like, even, even the, the lead singer of uh, Nine Inch Nails, who uh, whose name is Trent, he, he's got the first name with one syllable and the, the last name with two syllables. Trent Reznor. Like, that's a strong-sounding name. He's, he's going to mess you up. He's going to punch you in the face and not even think twice about it. And, and while I'm not a violent guy, I'm more of a lover than a fighter. Uh, I don't know. And, and, and Vanderloo, it's, it's too many syllables. If it was Trent Vander, that might be okay. And and maybe I'm sensitive because when I was younger and I was bullied, they always used to call me Sean Vanderloser. So maybe maybe that's part of the reason I never liked my name. I'm not really sure. There's all kinds of psychological stuff that I could get into, but I'm not going to. But uh, change your name, change your life. So we were talking about it and, say, and they were saying, well, Trent has a nice strong sounding name filled with confidence. Trent won't put up with any of that crap. Sean might, but Trent won't. Uh, and so I've, I've tried to change my mindset, but I've been Sean for 45 years. So mm, I don't really think that's happening. But regardless, uh, that's the, uh, the whole idea behind all of this stuff. And uh, I don't know. 
Am, am I going to keep Trent after the 30 or 60 days? No, I'm definitely going to go back to Sean. And maybe I just need to embrace who I really am. And that's the moral of this story. Be proud of who you are. Be happy with who you are. Live the life of who you are. Strive to be better, but accept who you are. Maybe that's maybe that's what it is. I don't really know. Anyway, uh, I hope this gives you some more insight into who I am. And I hope you enjoyed the uh, NerdCon talk and the pretty trees. And uh, maybe go check out that video on my Facebook. And uh, other than that, uh, next week we're going to talk about some more fun things. You can hardly wait. So anyway, uh, take care. I love you. And remember, only a mediocre person is always at his best. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links. And don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the T Public store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.